Hello and welcome to another edition of Taught Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. So in continuing with our month-long theme of underachievement, the concept I'm going to be talking about today is what's called goal valuation and how understanding what goal valuation is can be very important to helping a student who is underachieving. So when students are given a goal, they place a value on that goal. So they determine how important that goal is um, and how the, you know, much effort they want to put into achieving this goal. So typically there are three goals which students place value on. So the first of these is how important an activity is. So when they're doing something and they deem it to not be important, they may not place much value on it. And as a result, they may not give much effort or they may not, you know, you know, do their best in order to achieve what it is that you're asking them to achieve. So the student has to themselves, no matter how much you say it's important, the students for themselves have to value that as being important if it's something that they're going to do. And if a student, now there are some students that will say that's not important, but it's still something I need to learn. So a lot of times in math, you know, we're learning concepts that are not necessarily like important to life in general, but but they will come down further down the road and students recognize the long term um, importance of that. And so they'll they'll give it some value, even though they don't think it's it's extremely important. There are other things that are, you know, students tend to think that things that apply to their lives or, 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 you know, can be related to their lives are more important because it's something that affects them. Um, and so importance is one aspect of goal valuation. The second aspect of goal valuation is how interesting something is. So this is a big one um, in education as of late, isn't that students place value on whether something is interesting or not. So if no matter how important they might think it is, if they don't find it interesting, then they may not place value, much value on it at all. So you could be giving an information about, you know, rocks versus minerals, and they understand its importance, but it's a really boring, you know, reading or it's something that's not interesting to them. And so as a result, they don't place much value on it. Or the converse side of that is someone has a really exciting lab where kids go around to different stations and they have to identify rock or mineral and it's very hands-on and it's very interesting. And so they place value on that. So it, as teachers, you know, more and more, we have to find ways to make things interesting. Uh, we can't just sit back and, and uh, on the notion that students should learn how we, how you, it is in your class, we have to meet them more than halfway and make things more interesting. Um, and, you know, having authentic learning that is uh, more, uh, you know, active than passive is, is one way in order to make things more interesting. The third part of goal valuation is how attainable something is. So again, this is something these values are things that the students place on these, not that the teacher places on these. So if a teacher has a really challenging lesson that they want students to participate in. And a student takes one look at that and says, oh, I can't do that. Then they have devalued that, that goal and that they don't think it's, it's something that they can actually achieve. Um, and because of that, they're going to shut down. Um, and so, the way that these three work is that um, you want to have students think that, th that something is important. You want them to think that something is interesting. You want them to think that something is attainable. Um, but it doesn't always work out that way. Students place value on those items for themselves. And so it, it is important to figure out if a student is underachieving. So if a student is not doing their best work for you, um, identifying which of these goal valuations they are devaluing or not placing much value in and figuring out ways to shore that up or to make that better. So for instance, a student may be, you know, be looking at uh, something as important or as attainable and they need both it to be important and interesting in order for them to place any value on the lesson that you're doing. Because 
they take the three of these values and determine whether what they're learning is valuable or what you're going to be teaching them is going to be valuable. So for some students, it has to be both important and interesting in order for them to give effort. It may not have to be attainable or they may not be something they're placing a lot of value on, but it has to be important and interesting. Another way is that it may be that it is attainable and important, but it's not interesting. So in other words, it's, you're giving them information that is kind of boring, but is really important because they're going to need it um, to accomplish something. Uh, so when you're learning how to do your taxes, not the most interesting thing in the world, but it's important to learn how to do your taxes because otherwise you can get in trouble with the government. And it's, it's, although it seems a challenge to do it, it is attainable. There are tutorials out there that help with that and um, that can scaffold you to be able to do that. So some students need just one of these goals in order to, to engage in what it is that you're teaching. Some students need two of them in order to find you know that, that they're going to give effort and then there are the students that have to have all three they think that something has to be valued as being important it has to be valued as being interesting and it has to be valued as being attainable and because of this if you this is the student that is is the most difficult to reach because uh, and the, the one who's the biggest risk of being an underachiever because it is difficult to have all three of these things. It's not impossible. So ideally, as the teacher, you would simply create lessons that are interesting, that uh, seem important to students, and that seem attainable to students. Uh, and in a perfect world, that would work. But again, you don't have a lot of the power in this, in the placing of value. Um, students have most of that power. You have an influence on that. So. Um, you should make efforts to make your lessons more interesting by making them more active or making them have more student voice or student choice. Uh, this always, uh, you know, has student and, you know, raises student interest if they have some say so in what it is that they're learning. So those are some things that you can do in the class to, uh, you know, make students understand feel or value that it is it is something that is interesting when it comes to importance. As a teacher, we have we have a lot of influence on students in that um, if we tell them, if they ask why they're learning something and we tell them because they have to and don't give them a really valid, important reason why they should be learning that, then they're not gonna value it as being important. Um, some students might just take you for your word, those teacher-pleasing students who are compliant and they're just gonna take you for your word that it is important and they're just going to you know, do what you ask them to do. But this, these are not the students that we're, you know, that we're talking about in this. We're talking about the underachievers who don't place value on it and as a result, don't give effort because they don't see value in giving that effort. Um, when it comes to being attainable, there are things you can do in the classroom, such as having rubrics for them so they can see what it looks like to attain the different levels. Um, of the grade so you show what an a what a work looks like and B work looks like and so on and so forth So they can see it's attainable or you scaffold the lesson So it doesn't seem impossible when you give students a lesson that has a long-term deadline Sometimes it can feel impossible because it's a lot to take on But if it's broken down into sections like do this part first do this part and so on and so forth then students might see it as being more attain attainable so there are things that you can certainly do to influence um, the value that students place on these but again the final say so comes from them and so how what how you can use this to help with underachievement is if you can identify which of these students are not valuing or you know determining that if it doesn't have this i'm not going to give my best effort then you can you know, make more efforts uh, to try to improve those. So in other words, if you ask a student, why aren't you giving me your best effort? And they said, well, I don't find it very interesting. Then are there ways that you can make it more interesting? Are there ways that you can take interest that the student has um, and allow them to bring that into what it is that they're, they're doing? Because again, they may not value the topic or the importance of it, but they may value that they get to do something that they enjoy to do. Um, and so, you, so ideally speaking, 
what you want to do with an underachieving student is you want to try to determine which of these goals they're not valuing. Um, and then shoring that up and making sure that students are uh, seeing the value in this and helping them to see the value in this. Because that's the way that you get them to give the effort is that they see value in all three of those. Or they see value in the ones that they that they place the most importance on. In other words, they may think that one of the goals is, it's not really that important that it be interesting. School is school and it is what it is. Um, so they may not place a ton of value on that, but they do have to see the importance of it. So if you recognize that, then that's something that you can work on in your classroom or work with a student one-on-one -on -one in order to try to achieve that. So that's why it is important to understand the theory of goal evaluation. So you can put this into practice in your classroom and helping have practical strategies that, that will help students to see the value in each of these goals.